So who's familiar with the MRE? Whether you're a soldier or not, whether you camp, whatever you may do, you're familiar with the MRE, the, the meal ready to eat. It's, it's been called the meal refusing to exit. Uh, it, has a, it has a number of, of names. As a matter of fact, if you go to our social media site, but I may or may not be the social media manager for the NSR deck, uh, you'll see that we're doing a study where you'll eat MREs for 21 days and be sampled on how it affects the body and how it affects your internal workings. 40 mile ra radius of Natick, once again, Natick Soldier Research Development Engineering Center, right down the Mass Pike and the Jewel of the Metro West Crown. Um, but our food, amazingly enough, and people don't really understand it, is so important to the dismounted soldier or the soldier in general. If it isn't good and doesn't taste good, the soldier doesn't eat it. If the soldier doesn't eat it, I'm not fueling the soldier. I'm not fueling the soldier, the soldier's in an environment and they're burning calories. I'm going to make that soldier more susceptible to injury, to illness. I'm going to reduce cognitive function. There are all these things that are going to impact the soldier. So the MRE, for example, I believe we're at 26 menu items total. That, men, those 20, that 26 itemed menu changes about every 18 to 24 months. And that's because we filled the new item. Soldiers come back and go, I really love eggs with ham. Or I really ate egg, hate eggs with ham. And enough people say they hate it, it comes out of the menu and something else goes in. One of the new things that we just started that we're going to start fielding is MRE pizza. And I, oh, <laughs> listen to that sound. Most people go, ugh, pizza. A soldier goes, mmm, pizza. So as you can imagine, so let's talk about our, our rations, for example. Plus 120 degrees, minus 40 degrees, three-year shelf life. Has to be as good on the end of the third year as it was on the day, first day of the first year. Pizza, messy, sauce, pepperoni, bread. It's practically a miracle that we designed MRE pizza. Designed by the Combat Feeding Directorate down at the U.S. Army Natick Soldier Research Development Engineering Center, right down the Mass Pike in the Jewel of the Metro West Crown. But when you talk about that, soldiers are driven by food. Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. Okay, when you talk about the soldier, we, we all have, uh, we all, sorry, I don't mean to assume, most of us have problems with our weight. I said we, I'm a fat kid, where you do or don't eat something for whatever reason, and you realize fatigue, you realize that you're tired, whatever the case may be. The soldier doesn't have that capability. A uh, recent study in 2000, I think it was either 2004 or 2005, found that a soldier in Afghanistan in the summer of Afghanistan was burning somewhere on the order of about 9,500 to 10,000 calories a day. I love talking to smart folks. That's, that's a behemoth amount of calories. I, I mean, when you talk, look, I'm an Ironman athlete. It, it's a challenge for me to get 4,500 to 5,000 calories in my face a day. And I go on a 20-mile run, and the last thing I want to do is eat. Go pull an eight-hour mission cycle in a 100-plus degree temp, and the last thing you want to do is eat. So how do you change the design of the food? How do you concentrate the calories? How do you have the balance of what's fat, protein, and carbohydrate? We are now looking at 3D printing for out in that individual patrol base that says, okay, if I can't get you food and I can't get you MREs, I can create a slurry. I know some people will be like, slurry. But I can create a, a food product or a slurry that I can tailor. So, for example, if you're in that hot environment, I can build a gruel or oatmeal type meal that will give you somewhere on the order of five, six, seven thousand calories that you can eat and you don't have, you know, when we talk about 10,000 calories, I mean, a traditional food of what we eat, that's half this table's worth of food. You sit down, unless you're really hungry or it's been a really long night. I don't know if there's any MIT students in here. Unless it's been a really long night. Oh, you guys are probably too smart to even do that. At the University of Georgia, if it was a really long night, <laughs> you know, it would be a challenge to eat, to consume that much food. You know, how do you do that? How do you make it palatable? How do you make it um, easily digestible? How do you not have gastrointestinal distress? How do you adjust for the soldier that's coming in? We are now seeing soldiers with lycopene allergies, which means tomato skin and tomatoes. We have a higher concentration of lactose intolerant soldiers. We have a higher uh, group of the population that's gluten-free. We have vegetarians in the Army. We have vegetarian MREs in the Army. We have religious preference in the Army. We have religious preference MREs in the Army. So my Jewish soldiers, my Muslim soldiers can eat in accordance um, when they're in the field. That's a huge change from 20 years ago. 
I mean, when I came in the Army, it was like, you're a vegetarian? Yeah, you can be that when you get out of the Army. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no option around that. Um, you know, the Combat Feeding Director has a team of dietitians, and when I say team, I'm talking 14, that's sitting around and crunching this data all the time. And our soldiers are smarter. Our soldiers, we do actually developed a web app through a hackathon where our soldier has the ability to look at the MRE that's there, type it in and go, everything inside the MRE provides me this many calories per menu item, this much fat, this much protein, this much carbohydrate. Which gets more buy-in from the soldier. The soldier wants to eat. The soldier wants to consume. You get better understanding of the product. I'll be the first one to say it. When I got handed the MRE in 1986, that brown bag box, with the five fingers of death, if anybody remembers that, with hot dogs, and I just went, yeah, I, I, I got to eat it. Doesn't matter, I just have to, I have to consume it, whether you like it or not. Um, the, the fact of it being palatable, never on the table before. Now, by the way, we're talking shipboard food, long-term food, our tea rations food. We have uh, MRE heaters in every one of our MREs that allows you to actually um, heat up any of the meals in the MRE family so you can have a warm meal. Amazingly enough, most people don't understand how important that is. It's extremely important to have warm food, especially in cold environments. Anybody who's been in Hohenfels, Germany, middle of winter, really nice. Um, the other piece is in the energy expenditure to do that. So now we have standalone systems because when people talk about field feeding, we have MKT, mobile kitchen trailers. Well, I can't put an MKT fired up with propane, sit out in the middle of Afghanistan and serve hot chow all day. I can't get soldiers there, but I can cargo uh, and, and packetize rations that have the ability to heat themselves to get out there. Sadly, we haven't broken the, uh, we haven't broken the widget on good hot field coffee, but we're working on that. Um, and I will say, because a lot of people always ask, are those little tiny Tabasco bottles that are in MREs? Those are gone. For soldiers who know those, we're all very sad that they're gone. And there may or may not be, if you go to our social media feeds, there may or may not be a uh, sheet that you can sign to try to get those back. 